So Adobe has released a new version of their animation software called Adobe Edge, and now it's called Adobe Edge Animate. So let's take a look at some of the changes. A lot of them happened in the properties panel, and a lot of them are related to responsive design. So one of the things you'll notice immediately is that the one of the things you'll notice first is that the palette is a little more colorful than before. You can see, for example, that some of the icons have changed, like this icon down here, and everything just feels a little bit better. So as I mentioned, one of the biggest changes is the properties panel. So let's take a look. Stuff is less boxy, so if I click on an element, you'll notice that the place where you type in the name is less boxy. You have the ability here to choose whether an imported image is coded as a div or an IMG that doesn't appear when you have a rectangle, and that's something that used to be there whether or not you had an image. There's also an additional pop-up menu right next to the name of the element where you can type in a custom class for the item as well. There's a lot more options for creating keyframes directly in the properties panel. All the visibility options are now grouped at the top of the panel. So you have things like visibility, overflow, opacity, and transparency forming a new grouping at the very top. The web has moved towards a more responsive design approach, and Adobe Edge is including the ability to use responsive sizes as well as responsive positions for elements. So what you want to do is click somewhere in the background, and on the stage, click right next to the pixel position of the stage to switch it to a percentage-based layout, and the same thing for height right here. So you'll notice that now we can resize the stage by clicking and dragging it on this little icon at the top of the rulers, which is also a new feature. We now have rulers, and with rulers, of course, come guides that we can set in the view menu. Going back to responsive design, now we can switch the size of this right here, and we can also change the position of elements as well as the size. So if I click on this rectangle, I can come right here and switch this to be a percentage-based position, and now when I click and drag this to make it bigger and smaller, it moves with the position of the stage, which will move with the position of your window. So if I hit Command Return, it'll launch a browser, and you'll see that that rectangle also changes with the browser itself. You can control how that object moves in relation to either the top left, the right side of the screen, the bottom left, or the bottom right side of the screen. So if you have it, say, on this side, and you want to make sure that it moves with the bottom right-hand side, then actually let me go ahead and put it at the bottom right-hand side. And now as I resize my window, you'll notice that it moves with that edge. And that's pretty cool. Now you can also change the width of the element. Let me go ahead and reset it to the top left. I'll just put it over here for now. And I'll change the width to a percentage width. I'll just turn that on right there. And as I resize the stage, you'll see that the object resizes as well. It really makes a lot of sense. Another thing that you could do is look at the global versus applied positions. What that means is if you tap them right now, you'll notice that they're exactly the same. However, if you do any sort of transformation to an element, then the global and the applied measurements are going to be different. So over here are some presets for how this is going to be laid out, this object is going to be laid out. So you could say, I want to scale this background image, I want to scale the position of the element when things move, I want to... So these are just really presets for how your objects can behave, so you can very quickly tap on an object and then come over here and then choose a preset for how that object behaves. Now there's a hidden set of controls that are right here. If you click this open, you can see that you can set a minimum width as well as a maximum width. So we can set, make sure that this object has a minimum width of a certain amount of pixels. And then as we resize the object, it won't get any smaller than that amount. And that's a little bit useful. Um, it's a little bit hidden, so you have to turn that on and off, and that's another new feature. Something else you'll notice in the Properties panel is the addition of drop shadows, and that's really welcome. So if you understand that Edge is really a CSS animation program or a CSS-based animation program, you'll know that shadows is something that is very common with CSS3, and now you can add shadows, again, just by turning on this toggle right here. You can see the shadow up here, and then you can control things like the position of the shadow the blur and the spread, and you can see that everything has keyframes as well. And you can move this wherever you want. It can also be an inset shadow, so you could click on that and have an inset shadow easily in this new panel. The clipping hasn't changed much, but it's now accessible through a toggle as well. So if you want to clip an object, 
you could do that by turning on this toggle. You'll also know that there is an accessibility section. That's kind of cool. You can add a title to an element as well as create a tab index. It's nice to see that Adobe is thinking about accessibility in Adobe Edge. So we also have a number of changes to the menus. If you look at the view menu, we have rulers, guides, and the ability to snap to guides and lock the guides. So this works just like any Adobe program. You can set up a guide. If you want to delete it, then you just drag it out of the screen. So that's kind of cool. I'm glad they added that. It's something that any layout person finds really handy. You also have some changes to the modify menu. And the change here is, let me go ahead and set up a circle so you can see what's, what happens with the new option. So I'm going to set this right here, change the opacity a little bit, and then I'm going to grab these two elements. So when I go to the Modify menu, notice that I can group elements in a div. That's not exactly grouping how you would do in Illustrator. If you group the elements on a div, what happens is over here in the Elements panel, you'll see that you now have a group. And this is essentially useful for moving things together. If you start doing things like resizing, you'll notice that it doesn't really help you. It's sort of a div container that wraps both of these elements. So if you know HTML and CSS, you know what I'm talking about. It's just a container. It really doesn't do a whole lot of anything other than let you move them. If you really want to rescale things, then it's better to just convert into a symbol. So you could right click and convert to symbol. And once you have a symbol, then you can go ahead and resize that and position that. So if you want more complicated transformations to grouped elements, it's better to just make them into symbols. Let me go ahead and undo that a few times until I get it back. And I'll even get rid of this group right here just by undoing a few more times. And there we go. We're back to where we were. So there's some other options in the timeline menu. Let me go ahead and make a little animation. I'll turn on the pin and just kind of move this thing to create some basic animations here. And then at this position, I'll just move it up here. So now we have a little bit of a transition. So I want to show you that you can jump between keyframes by going to the previous keyframe. And there's a command key for that, as well as the next keyframe. So we can jump to these positions down here by using those command keys. And that's kind of handy. So there's also a couple of options for removing transitions. So if you have, say, um, I'm going to put this over here. And so now we have essentially four keyframes. If I want to get rid of this section right here without changing these two keyframes, then I can go to the timeline and select Remove Transitions. That gets rid of the transitions between those keyframes. And now it just kind of jumps to a new position and starts the other transition. Let me pull that up. A little bit so you can see that it's I only did it to one of the elements so um, that circle stays put until this position and it kind of jumps to the new position so and you know I, it's a it's a small change but I think every little change helps so in the tool panel you'll notice that there's the and I've already used it there's the ability now to draw ellipses and ellipses are pretty much like rounded rectangles so as a matter of fact notice that if I take a look at this circle so this is essentially a rectangle with 50% size on the edges. I can actually undo that, and you can see it go back to being a rectangle. Another new option is this little default layout for new elements. So if you click on that, you can choose the defaults for how elements are going to be created on the stage. There's a few timeline panel improvements. You can turn on grids, which is kind of cool. So when you turn grids on, you can see these little lines appear on your timeline. And now things kind of snap to those positions. You can control the timing by clicking on this pop-up right here and changing the density of the grids. Also, the Instant Transition Mode icon is now different and has been renamed Auto Transition Mode. It lets you create immediate changes and transitions. And I really love that new icon. It's a lot clearer. You may notice also that in the Elements panel, we now have, like in Fireworks, icons that represent the type of object in each element. So that's kind of cool. You can see that this one has like a little picture and this one looks like a little ellipse. I mean, this really feels like a more complete product, I think. So there's some minor changes at the bottom of the workspace. You can see them right here. So you can now resize the stage by clicking and dragging right here or typing in a value. And there's also a way of centering the stage. So if you click on this little icon, it'll center the stage. If you, for some reason, maybe has, have moved the stage over to the left, you want to center it, you can just click right here and it centers the stage. So pretty cool. So another new change is notifications. You can see a notification right here. 
it appears as a little icon on the bottom right hand side of your stage. And if you click on it, you'll get notifications about different things. If you make any type of coding error or if Edge Animate just wants to communicate something to you, it's going to appear right here. And all you need to do is just click on this little icon to pull it up. There's also a few coding changes in the program. If I right click on this ship and I choose open actions for ship, you'll notice that there's a few methods that have been added. Mouse enter, mouse leave, and focus events. Edge also is going to allow you to look at errors within the code panel as they appear. So this is looking more and more like a finished product. I'm really impressed, super impressed with the responsive layout features. I wondered how a layout program was going to be able to adjust to a responsive world. And I think Adobe Edge Animate has got it right. So way to go, Adobe.